What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Hanging with Daddy. We have a spectacular guest tonight. We don't even want to wait. Let's not waste time. I want to get right into it. So what we're going to do is give you that one minute intro because I know you guys love this song. We're going to start with the bop. Then we're going to get right into the show. and We're going to have a blast tonight. Wait till you see what we have. This is more exciting than I think I've ever been to start off a show. So here we go. Let's listen to the sweet sounds of Gabe. Get, get, get down Turn on the pockets, we looking alive right now Feeling it back, take a quick look inside up All of these analysts, daddy, you handle this No, he's a baddie, I know he ain't bad at this We gon' lay back, talking irrelevance Why do all that? Just for the hell of it Hanging with daddy What's the vibe, though? Late night vibes oh. Hanging with daddy What's up, Mike? Turn it on right now, that got the remote now Hanging with daddy Let's go Late night vibes And we're hanging with daddy Turn up Turn it on right now, daddy got control now. Never gets old. It never does. So tonight, we're going to mix it up a little bit. We, we always bring in analysts. We show you kind of the human side of analysts. But today, we have a star. We have what is probably the hardest working man in show business. You know him from that thing you do, Boiler Room. My kids know him from Dire of a Wimpy Kid. They are probably more excited than I am, which says a lot. And he is coming out with a new show on Amazon, The Summer I Turned Pretty, about his glow up on how he became a beautiful human being. But personally, I still love him as one of the 105ers, the greatest group in Fishbowl 11. So I want to bring him out, Mr. Tom Everett Scott. Tom, thanks for joining my friend. <laughs> hey, Mike. Uh, 105. 105, the greatest group. So what I will tell you is um, I, I know a lot of you know you from Hollywood, but I know you as the person I had to personally confide in my sadness about Jordan Love. You and I went <sighs> all in on Jordan Love. Do you remember how we were excited was the 13th, 14th round. We're sharing <laughs> screenshots about how we got them and how right. that was going to be the difference. Like the skeleton key, the, 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 the secret to fantasy was going to be Jordan Love. We were close. I thought Jordan wrote Jordan Love and Amari Rogers were going to be my hookup that was going to carry <laughs> us. Luckily, I did have Aaron Rodgers, which worked out pretty well. Too, oh, but. you did? Oh, okay. Yeah, because he, he had an MVP season. He did. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the Kelsey club, I know you went Josh Allen. Uh, uh, you know, I wish I'd gone Kelsey club. I should have listened to you. It, I mean, Josh Allen was a star though. He he was an absolute star. He was, he was my Scott fishbowl team was kind of weak though, but that's okay. Who I, I don't, I don't think about it often. No, no. no. I, I think about, I think about mine a lot every, every like week well, or I so. I, I, I was being facetious. Yeah. Cause I, I made, I made the finals. I don't know if I told you that. Like the the oh, final that's twenty. Why you think about it a lot. I do. Yeah. Oh, no. In, was... in 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 a oh. good loving way. Like mm. you know, that that I was see. nice. Uh, it, but it wasn't Jordan Love. Amazingly enough, it was some other players <laughs> that made it happen. Jordan Love. That was just like some dart throw at the end. Uh, whatever. We'll get him back. We'll get him this we'll, year. We'll get him back. But that was the tear between one hundred and five. It was the Kelsey Club and uh, Josh Allen were really the two ways people were going at the draft, and that was always interesting in the group. At the 105, you're right. Wait, so you went to the finals. I didn't really follow this. Sorry. I didn't. Uh, no, that's fair. It, it was a bigger deal for me than you, yeah. For sure. But I feel like I should have made it a bigger deal for me, um, knowing that I'd be on the <laughs> podcast. Uh, so what did that mean? I don't, I've don't. i never been that far. What does it mean to go to the finals? So they have 20 people at the end that go at it in a kind of winner-take-all top score. Um, don't ask me where I finished because that's embarrassing. But, uh, you know, making it there was pretty cool. So uh, you, you have kind of – it breaks down. So you make the playoffs. Then you have people that make it out of the conference. I and got you. what happened was – and I was following this way too closely. Somebody had switched out Antonio Gibson for Devontae Parker in the conference finals and he had zero catches and that man caught a pass. I was out oh, and I don't know how it happened. Uh, then I got to the finals and got absolutely destroyed. My team uh, literally just decided not to show up, which is fine. Uh, you know, happy to be there. And we had a, a fan win again this year, which is oh, always cool to see. Yeah. Great. You love to see that. So uh, they'll, they'll be on the pod uh, potathon this year and, and telling us all about how we crushed all of us, which is always fun, but you and I hopefully will be back at it next year. Absolutely. I can't wait. I hope so. It's my favorite thing to do. Uh, it comes so at a perfect time of year, you know, right when you're really like, oh, excited, you know, for fantasy football to begin. 
oh, July, yeah, you're you're in a dead zone. You're kind of like, hey, what's mm-hmm. going to happen? And then boom, this massive draft of 1,400 people takes off. That's right. And you're online and you're chatting with your group and you're saying posi- people in the position on Twitter. I mean, it's just super fun. Oh, it is. And it you were outstanding fun. to have in the group. That group was so active. I know my last year's group wasn't anywhere near that, uh, but we even carried afterwards. I, I remember the draft was over. We were talking about your father-in-law and his draft on ESPN. That's right. That's right. <laughs> and he's in my league that I'm a commissioner of. And uh, man, he's just, yeah, I love that guy. He's so into it. Uh, he's 80. Uh, I'm going to play golf with him tomorrow. Bernie. Perfect. And how did Bernie do in the league? Ah, oh, man, I really was like, this is going to be his year. Um, he just missed the playoffs. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was a shame, but he's good. You know, he's getting better and better and better. He's starting to like pay more attention. Like in the beginning, you know, he was that guy, he's a giants fan. He would draft giants. He would, you know what I mean? And then yeah. I would say like, come on, Bernie. you know, like, <laughs> like listen to this podcast or, you know, maybe like draft a quarterback later. And, you know, so he's kind of gotten the hang of it. I love it. Now whose podcast are you recommending? Like who are the people you lean on for your fantasy advice? Okay. Well, JJ's my buddy. And mm-hmm. I, so late round uh, QB, For sure. I also became somehow the living the stream mascot. So Denny and JJ, kind of like the first guys in fantasy who I became friends with in for real. And um, and then from there, got to know more and more people, uh, which has been amazing because I'm such a uh, nerd for it. And um, so for my father in law, I suggested that he uh, pay attention to Roto World at the time because it's not even called that anymore. But like, uh, check player updates and then at the and evan silva used to be there yep and i would say check out evan silva's you know top 150 when it comes to recommendation yeah Yeah, that was always must read every year wasn't it absolutely oh totally still is i mean i love uh established to run and it's pretty much the same thing absolutely yeah i remember he uh he took over because i was old and I used to read, uh, was it Cliff Charpentier's book that used to come out at Barnes & Noble back in the 80s and 90s. And he was always my go-to for <laughs> rankings, you know, pre-internet. I don't want to date us, but uh, I'm sure you remember playing fantasy oh, on paper and mailing oh out God. the results. Of course. Oh, my God. In the USA Today, every Monday and Tuesday and getting your, you know, figuring out your points. Uh, also, just that summer reading, like getting a fantasy football magazine and taking it to the beach when you would, you know, go with your girl or whoever and... Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is my yes. Uh, oh, you brought a book. I'm I'm gonna read this magazine. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we had it drafted, and and I don't think people quite understand that weren't there before. But the amount of times I had to tell people someone had drafted Swervin Mervin Fernandez. Oh, and I said, Jim, uh, he's now in the CFL, and we don't count those points. So would you <laughs> like? To... But the magazine had him on the Raiders at the time, and he had gotten cut. I don't know, maybe like a month later. But you can't update a magazine. It's no. it is what it is. And you have to be pretty savvy. I mean, now we just have way too much information, right? Oh, wait, it, it, it's almost, I think I've gotten worse because you almost <laughs> fool yourself into believing everything you've read. So. It's so true. Ah, oh, I just emailed my league, uh, you know, to tease everybody, of course, you know, because this is what it's about is picking on each other. I said, uh, well, you know, Russell Wilson doesn't play for the Seahawks anymore. He's on the Broncos. But, you know, favorite this email for later. Uh, when we do the draft and half of you are like, what's going on? What happened? <laughs> what? I don't understand. <laughs> that is by far the best part. I mean, we were talking about it uh, before the show, like talking trash and, and enjoying it, especially for folks like us from Boston. I mean, that's how we grew up. That's how you show friendship. If Where are you I don't from talk there? Yeah, that's true. Uh, so I, I I was born in Malden, so I was oh. uh, I was a North Shore kid, but Shore. Uh, I spent a lot of time on 24. So the big thing to congratulate you on surviving that highway, uh, knowing <laughs> you know who, where you're from in the South yeah. Shore, uh, driving that was always a death trap for me. But you would drive it down from from Malden to Boston. Would you have to commute to Boston? No, so I would actually be down in uh, Bridgewater. That's uh, you know where my ex was from of like five years. So I would come down from Malden and go through the city, uh, and that part didn't scare me. But once I got to 24, when you know it turned somehow magically, you were going south to north without actually changing directions in any way. <laughs> uh, lovely Boston. I, I'd hop on 24, and you know cutting through the Brockton area was uh, was taking my life in my own hands for about a three mile stretch. That's right. You probably took 24 down to either 106 or 104. 
Yep, exactly. In, in, in the bridge water. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, no, I know that route. I know that route. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, my little town, East Bridgewater, um, wasn't really close to the freeway. So you'd have to drive through West Bridgewater or Brockton or whatever to, to get to 24 or Bridgewater and, and then shoot north. So could Boston. you cut around and not have to deal with 24? Did you have to? To go to Boston? No, you, you pretty much have to take 24 up past Braintree. This is exciting uh, podcast. Talk, this is what, this what everyone wants to talk about. Yeah, sorry. We got yeah. locked in there. So <laughs> let's let's get back to track. Uh, you have, <laughs> we talked about you have a new show coming out on, right. um, and it's about how beautiful you are. And That's your glow right. up is what I understand. My glow up. I love that. Thank you for that intro. Um, of course. Yes. Uh, that's right. I'm um, having a, a, a moment in my 50s. Um, I am part of this show that is based on a young adult novel by Jenny Han called The Summer I Turned Pretty. And it's about the 16 year old girl who, and her family. And they summer with a rich family. Uh, the moms have are childhood friends. And um, I'm the dad of the, of the rich family that has a house on the beach in Massachusetts, actually. Lovely. And yeah. And that's the story. And um, yeah. So season one's coming out sometime early summer in uh, on uh, Amazon. Excellent. So I'll be able to get it with my prime and you to check out what you've been up to. That's right. And you'll also be able to get, you know, various items delivered to you uh, without having to pay for shipping. That's that's what I'm looking for is yeah. I'm looking for non, non shipping costs and I'm looking for Tom Everett Scott on my television. Right. It's the combo. And, that that's all I need. Yeah. And I told you, I woke up one Sunday and your face was on my television and I looked <laughs> oh. over, I'm like, what is this? And my kids were watching Die of a Wimpy Kids. So oh, fantastic. Uh, yeah, we'll see if we can bring them in, especially if it's a young adult novel, we'll, we'll bring the kids in to, to show your versatility. I'll have a lot less like bird poop on me, a lot less uh, Cheeto dust. Yeah. I, I don't think they're going to be thrilled about that, Tom, but you know, <laughs> I'll get you an, an honest review from my eight year old and see what we think. <laughs> spicy um i like it i i they like said we we are big fans in this house and we'll continue to be well i appreciate it and i'm glad you enjoyed it of course so talk me through your fantasy now you've told me how many leagues you're in i mean you're playing redraft you're playing dynasty you're playing guillotine yeah. leagues yeah yeah i think uh it, it all turned out uh this isn't how i planned it but i, had, I think i had 12 leagues last year Ooh. yeah yeah. And mm, I did um, Liz Loza has a show with Austin Eckler. Mm -hmm. It's like called Eckler's Edge or something like that. And I got to, you know, had the good fortune of being on that, getting to talk to Austin Eckler, who I'm a big fan of, and Liz, I'm a big fan of. And they were like, oh, my gosh, 12 leagues. And how many of those leagues do you have, you know, Austin on your team? And I was like, ah. oh, no. It, it, how awkward. I had didn't have him on any of my teams. Oh no. And I was like, oh man, but that's why I'm doing so badly. <laughs> and uh, you know, trying to spin it. And then <laughs> the weekend after I did that podcast, he went off for the four touchdown weekend. And my brother in law had him on his team and kicked my ass. I was like, hmm, Perfect. I wonder if Austin took that personally. I, I think he might you may have been the reason he had the four touchdowns. And thank I, you for that, because I did have Austin Eckler on my championship. Of course team. you did. You so I <laughs> Austin Eckler and Jonathan Taylor made it. So I didn't really have to fill in the rest of the team. It just kind of worked out. Oh man, what a blaze they put on. I mean, like the two of them. Oh, in this year, if you had if you had Jonathan Taylor, Jamar Chase, mm -hmm. Cooper Cup, you had a good year. You you were doing fine. Yeah. It reminded me of uh the run they made was was very similar to what was it uh 2019 with Todd Gurley, where Really, if you didn't have Todd Gurley, you weren't winning. It, it, I've never, you yeah. know, there aren't many players. I mean, we can go back to Tomlinson, Priest Holmes. Mm. The, every once in a while, you get those guys that it's just like, yeah. wow. Yeah. Now I'm stuck with Taylor, though, where I'm trying to figure out, can the value get any better? Like, if you're in Dynasty, man, you could get pretty much anything for Jonathan Taylor or Jamar Chase right now. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. They are probably the top guys, right? So what what would you do? like? You had Taylor right now. Are you just saying, "Hey, let's see how many championships we can get out of this," or are you looking to cash in the bag now and and see what you can do to kind of rebuild the whole team with them? Well, I don't know, Mike, because this I'm only in one dynasty league. It's the first dynasty league I've ever been in. I'm actually going to probably be hitting you up for advice this year. Oh, uh, you know where to find me. I, I was just trying to set you up as an expert, and and now we'll go back to redraft talk, and we can do that. So, Jonathan no, no, no. Taylor. 
No, let's keep talking about Dynasty League. I actually think you're you're on to something here. So so if I had Jonathan Taylor on my Dynasty League, mm-hmm. I personally would have uh, would would keep him. I would. I would just be like, yay, I have him, and you know, I wouldn't be thinking like ahead because uh, <laughs> I don't know if Dynasty's for me. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So you would be actually. It's funny. We're gonna match up perfectly because. I am all about win now. I actually did put out a rebuild oh, article today, which is weird because I never rebuilt. Uh, but I did put out when you should rebuild, how and why. But I am absolutely win now. Like my my team okay. is old and and when it breaks down, I'll figure it out from there. But that's where we're at. Great. Can I quickly tell you who's on my team? 100%. And you Let's get, do this. Get a little advice. Okay. Yeah. So I have um, a couple. It's a two quarterback league. It's PPR. Okay. All right, and um, there's, a, I think it's a 12-team league. Here, I got my roster right here. And these are the guys that I have. And we started this, so we did our startup um, the season before this past one. So Okay, and it, it was a clean startup? You didn't transition for anything? Clean startup. Clean startup. Perfect. I think I drafted somewhere like the uh, middle to back half of the – draft and i was on either side of me was like jj zacharyson and the pop i mean i was just getting <laughs> you jumped right. right into the deep end i love I it i did but i did make the finals i came in second the first season but then last season did not do so well so this is my roster i have uh cousins who i got in a trade with the pod father yep i have tua i have zeke aaron jones mike evans terry mclaurin t higgins hopkins Ayuk, schultz and then my bench is uh, Dalton Trubisky, who might be a starter this year, which mm-hmm. is nice. Uh, and then a bunch of scrubs. I got Ramondre. I have uh, – who else of note? That's about it. I got TJ Hawkinson, too. So that that's a squad right there. So, it's okay. Uh, well, you got some some benefit, which is um, Aaron Jones, I, I, I think, is going to take off. With Devontae Adams out of the mix in Green Bay – I think he's going to be a PPR monster for at least a year or two. And I do think Zeke is going to bounce back. So I think you're you're okay there. I love Higgins, so you're you're totally covered with T. Higgins. I mean, he's like my my crush as far as receivers who you know have great value. McLaurin. Let's talk about Terry McLaurin. Okay, let's talk about Terry McLaurin. Terry McLaurin is one of my favorite. His name value probably exceeds his dynasty value. And even, you know, with Carson Wentz coming in the fold, it will be the best quarterback he's had. But I mean, he's finishing at a PPR, um, you know, per game average at like wide receiver 24. Um, But when we look at ADP, he's going at like 15 or 16. Hmm. So that's the type of guy that if you can get somebody to pay that wide receiver 15 price, you could end up in good shape. Okay. So, like, what would that be? Some draft picks, future. Yeah, I mean, for, for McLaurin, if I could get my hands on, even if you look at these top six, six picks coming out, especially if you have a two-quarterback league, it might drop down to even like the top eight or nine. Um, you have some good talent there. If you could snake that and maybe a 2023 20, second, I think you'd be in pretty good shape there. Um, you know, other guys that you may want to look at that are, are coming up, like you have some, maybe if you're looking for a throw-in wide receiver, right? One of the guys I love from the, the Patriots that I'm getting for free is like a Kendrick Bourne, uh, seeing they haven't upgraded their wide receiver core right now. So maybe like a first, a second, and a Bourne. And what I love about that is the optics, Tom, because there's not a lot of value in, in Kendrick Bourne. So when, you, when people see his name, they think, oh, this is nothing. I'm getting someone for, for free. And you're looking at that pickup. The other guy that I think people are going to be, you know, big on is like a, a Michael Pittman because of the changing quarterback now, right? Like you're looking at Matt Ryan going there. Um, but, you know, to me, he's like a McLaurin type where I think it would be, a, you know, you might be able to get him plus if you wanted to. And those guys might flip flop in the rankings. Oh, interesting. So, so trying to flip McLaurin for Pittman is I, a good move. I, yeah, I'd say I'd say Pittman and a, a little bit plus would be a good move. I think right now mm-hmm. you still might be able to get the plus. Um, I'd wait maybe like a, a week or two, let the shine of Matt Ryan come on coming over, drop off a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I think you're in decent shape. And then the other guy that I love that you have is um, DeAndre Hopkins. I, I think he's going to come back with a vengeance. Oh, great! I mean, I know that he's getting older. And, yep. uh, but, but yeah, I have an older squad. I mean, definitely Mike Evans 
Jones, Zeke, uh, Hopkins, you know, so I got to get a little younger and I traded, go ahead. No, please. And I traded uh, last year. I didn't have enough uh, quarterbacks. I I didn't, I just had Dalton and Tua and, and it was weak. So that's why I traded uh, Rashad Bateman. Yep. And this year's my first round pick from this year. Okay. For, uh, I got back cousins and Gabriel Davis. And that was it. That's not bad. I mean, realistically, that's you traded a lot in, of name value. Uh, you know, Bateman, I think, is good. I'm not sure how great he will be. Um, where did the pick end up? Oh, it en- ended up third pick. So, um, okay. So I'm going to okay. get to a three this year. Okay. So that's, that's not too bad. Um, you know, would like to see the pick a little lower. Uh, but what I think with your team, I mean, taking a look at it, and like I said, we just talked about kind of the rebuilding article that I put out, um, figuring out how to maximize your assets, right? And what I love about that team is you're going to know probably by week six or seven, whether this team is a contender. Got it. And you're going to have some guys that are going to rise, maybe some that won't. Like maybe Zeke doesn't bounce back to what we expected to, but Hopkins comes back to a wide receiver one. But what you want to do is let's take a look around the league and, and say, hey, can I logically beat these guys? And if not, you know, keep, wait for those injuries. Right now, people are going to feel pretty good. Everyone feels decent about their squads, right? Yeah. But you start selling those pieces like week five or week six, like you maximize those assets. You know, always um, Leo's a guy that I follow for, for a while. He always talks about knowing your league mates. Like I know everyone's roster probably better than my own. And second, something goes down. I'm on the phone. Hey, I noticed you, got, you know, they, I think one year Beckham hadn't even gotten taken off the field yet. And I was on the phone with my buddy going, you watching? I was like, I got Chris Godwin for you. Uh, so always taking a look at those moves. But you have the luxury of having a potentially competing team, which is great, um, that realistically you could sell off for some real nice pieces if you cool. didn't have a, a squad. So I, I love the way you're going into it. Um, old doesn't scare me in Dynasty. In fact, it usually means you have some value plays there. Uh, but somebody's going to want those guys. Now, what you don't have is a ton of kind of, hey, I should be building around these pieces other than T. Higgins. Right. So what we probably would be looking at is if it doesn't work out, say by week five or six, you might want to go into that, you know, hey, we're doing a a full sale here and and we're trying to get incredibly younger. Um, Another guy that I didn't mention that I would absolutely love you to target is Devonta Smith. Got it. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. I love that guy. I could have drafted him instead of Rashad Bateman. Um, yeah. That was they were, they were close as, as rookie. They were close. They were close. Yeah. And Waddle. I could have paired Waddle with, uh, with, with Tua. Although I don't think they're going to, you know, be that dynamic of a duo. Well, I, I can tell you that I, I gave up the Waddle pick for DeAndre Hopkins and threw an extra first. So uh, you didn't make nearly as big of a mistake as I did. So, you know, these things happen when we're playing to win, right? <laughs> yeah. I guess um, so. But yeah, Smith is going right now as like wide receiver 24. So I mean, wow. we could really look at him and, and he's a good guy to maybe take a look at that McLaurin target as well. Um, assuming that people in your league don't watch the show, which, you know, not many people do. So you should be safe. Um, but, you know, we can, we can make this work. That's it's a it's a lot of value in that right. in that team. So that that's a good thing. Um, I've had the pleasure of getting to know one of the people who is in my uh, division in Scott Fishbowl in the in the uh, Captain Geach and the Shrimp Shack Shooters division. Uh uh, Russell from the he's the FF trade addict yep. and uh, he's also been uh, giving me some good advice as well I should yeah. give him a shout out he is outstanding yeah and I you guys did an outstanding show uh, I remember you were on I want to say it was the week before I was and I had to follow you up which I was like you guys really <laughs> went slum afterwards so. stop it oh come on oh come on yourself all right, so let's talk about recent news. What what has you geeked out? I mean, there's been so much football news going on. You mentioned Russell Wilson, obviously, and we touched on Matt Ryan, but I feel like the whole league flipped upside down. Is there anybody you're looking at going, wow, this is a big change or you're excited about? Yeah, yeah, I think it's all exciting. I like this time of year. I like uh, when free agency uh, begins and and all these you know all this news starts hitting. Feels good after football's over to have a little excitement. Um yeah, I mean, you know, Deshaun Watson going to the Browns is kind of a big deal. I don't know if he'll mm-hmm. play this year. I don't know if he'll be suspended or not. Um, I like I like Russell Wilson to the Broncos. I'm excited to see what he does there. Let's shake it up, get him away from Pete Carroll, who just I think you know didn't ever really let him cook, and mm-hmm. uh, that should be interesting. The AFC West is going to be 
fireworks. So is the AFC Central. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, those two. You know, those two divisions. Is it Central or is it North? What are they it's North. It? Yeah. No. Yeah. North. You were you, you showing your age, but I was gonna let it go because I'm old too. Um, but it's not. <laughs> it's not the North. I don't think we've had a Central since like '95. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> the North <laughs> Division. Right. Uh, so, yeah, because I mean they've got the you know Super Bowl uh, contenders, the Bengals. They've got the mm-hmm. you know they've got the Browns with Deshaun Watson now. There's um, uh, Trubisky going to the Steelers, but the Steelers always find a way to get in there. And then um, uh, who am I forget? But the Ravens with Lamar Jackson. I mean that's an interesting league. But then the AFC West is just look at that. It's like Herbert Carr got Adams and uh, yeah Russell Wilson and obviously Mahomes and the Chiefs. It's just going to be lights out. It's going to be so fun to watch. I can't imagine. We're going to see that twice a year and then probably be half the playoff matchups by the time it's all said Mm -hmm. and done. It's going to be a blast. Yeah, I mean, I, I, what the Bengals did in the offseason, I mean, what you love to see is a team not just resting on their laurels. And, man, they've been going out and picking up players. And then I thought the Raiders would just roll over. And all of a sudden, they picked up a whole Pro Bowl team. And last I heard, they're uh, they're looking to get Honey Badger and Stephon Gilmore uh, this week to both. Holy the crap! Are you serious? Yeah. Wow, this is getting sh- wild. That'll shore up the uh, secondary there. Exactly what you need in that division. So it's uh, yeah, it's something. What what the rumor was was that Gilmore is waiting on uh, Matthew to sign because he's willing to take less to pair up with them. That's awesome. Oh, that's yeah, so, really cool. So Gilmore is in, as I understand it, and he's trying to bring Matthew with him. And that would be, uh, man, it's going to be fun to watch. Um, yeah, because he's going like to get to play the Chiefs twice a year. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a blast. And you know, he's got to be, you know, licking his chops at that, especially when they went out and just signed a safety after he left. Like, come <laughs> on, guys. So, I hope that, um, I hope that, that Josh McDaniels, you know, has, has a better go of it this time than he did when he was uh, head coach of the Broncos. Well, it's funny. It, it seemed like it was getting off to a rocky start, but now, I mean, they have gone out and got him the pieces he needs. And mm-hmm. I mean, we saw in, in you know, not to go too far back, but in 2007, when he had true weapons, I mean, he orchestrated the greatest offense in NFL history. So, uh, you know, Derek Carr's accurate. He, you know, now he has Renfro, Waller and Adams to play with. I mean, it's, it's wild that, yeah, that that's cool. the worst offense in the division. And, and, you know, those are the names that are on it. So yeah, it's going to be crazy. And if he could pull it off, I mean, this would be outstanding to see him in his first year, try to get out of that division. So, Oh yeah. And there's going to be some shootouts. Oh yeah. 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 It's, it's, this, this is not going to be a defensive division. It's going to be 50 to 40 games. It's, it's oh, going to be, you Can't know, wait. greatest show on turf every week. So. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we had a, a really good season this past season. Uh, there were a lot of great games, especially the uh, Sunday night and Monday night games. They all kind of like were great finishes, and um, uh, you know it was exciting. We got we we got a lot of good football this year. I don't know how you know it turned out for everybody and their teams and their, but it was certainly fun to watch. I'm excited for uh, Troy Aikman and Joe Buck to move over to uh, Monday night football. Um, mm-hmm. I don't want to disparage anybody, but I just kind of feel like that that broadcast wasn't as good as it had been previously. Um, so I'm excited for that. Monday night football is a big deal. Now you've been watching the standard broadcast. Are you uh, a Manning cast guy? Well, I had to go to the Manning cast. I had to, I, you mm-hmm. know, like I said, I don't want to put anybody down, but I mean, I just feel like like ESPN had been kind of like lacking a little bit in their, in their Monday night football broadcast and the Mannings. I was so entertaining, but here's my, here's my one thing about the Manning broadcast that I didn't mm-hmm. like, and it was no fault of theirs. If I was going to be, say, cooking dinner, which on the West Coast, 5 o'clock start of the game, 5, 5.30, I'm, I'm cooking dinner for everybody. And so uh, I can't – they wouldn't talk enough about what was happening in the game yeah. for me to, uh, to hear what was going on if I wasn't looking at the TV. And I was like, darn it. Like, I can't leave the Mannings on if I'm not looking at the TV. No, a, that's a great point. I mean, they were breaking down something, but if you didn't see it happen, you wouldn't be able to correlate what was happening during the game. They, yeah, they, they, like calling it play by play was not their, you know, priority. Nope, no, they, they, they were. Yes, yeah, you needed the visual. No, I, right. I absolutely hear that. So then I'd be like, darn, okay, well, I gotta cook dinner, so I got all right. I'll put it back on, you know, the the other guys. I'll put it on ESPN, the, the mothership, and then. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it, so it, was, it was tough. It was tough. Yeah. <laughs> well, now we have pros who be able to cook dinner and not have to watch the TV the whole time. So you can get to go. I year. just uh, gotta be able to do two things at once. 
That's fair. That that's fair, and I, I think you should expect to actually hear what's happening on the game expect, while you listen yeah. to the game. That's, that's not right. too high expectations. That's fair. Not too crazy? No, I I think you're completely in range and where you need to be. I paid my dues. <laughs> All right, so before we get into oh, what, what's always my final question, the Scott Fishbowl, and we talked about, you know, that being the, the best league there is and, and Scott just being, a you know, an amazing person for what he yeah. does and putting it together. Yeah. Let's talk about some lessons learned. Like, is there anything that you were going to change from your approach? Let's say he does roll the scoring because it was similar for the past two years. If he rolls the scoring back a third year, what would you change? Like, what, what do you think you maybe hit a little too heavy and what were you a little too light on? Okay. I honestly think that tight end, you, you got to go premium with the tight ends. I, I, mm-hmm. I think that that it's, it's such a scoring benefit. Um, I, you know, there was a guy though in my division that did really well and he, he sloughed QB big time. And he, he just, because nobody else was doing it. He just took all the best. What, Cause everybody was thinking wide receivers so deep. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to wait on wide receiver and just like seven rounds in a row. He went wide receiver. Wow. And he put this monster team together. That's uh, it's a little risky for me, but I mean, there's that you can definitely play with the zigging while everybody's zagging kind of thing. And I love that. that the, and the cool part about the league is I feel like so many people, when we looked at who did well, had, different builds like you weren't looking at the same 10 players over and over again there were some common threads like it seemed like cooper cup was on a lot of teams uh jamar chase obviously we talked about like some of those guys that blow up out of nowhere that you're kind of like well yeah it makes sense they're there but but you did see some zero running back builds you did see some robust running back builds you saw you know stacking quarterbacks i'm gonna go four or five of them to cover for injuries and it's funny because you almost feel like people were basing it off of what happened before. Like I went heavy quarterback because I was starting Nick Mullins last year. Yeah. And I, I had vowed to never have that happen again. So I, I right. think I drafted like five quarterbacks, unfortunately, one with Roethlisberger. And I, I thought he could still throw when I drafted him. Mm. Uh, and, and that wasn't the case, but I got saved by <laughs> Mac Jones. So, it, you know, it wasn't too, too bad. Uh, right. But I feel like it's all based on experiences. So I love hearing how people are like, man, if I could do it over again, this is the route that I'd go. Are you going to go QB heavy again? I think I will. Yeah. I, I think what I, what I learned is that not the only way to really not have a chance week to week is to have a, either a positional player in that super flex or a quarterback who could throw you one of those negative tens, right? Like you can't, you can't rely on like, even like a Jalen Hurd scared me a little bit because there were some weeks he would come out with 51% completion percentage. And if his legs didn't make up for it, you were in trouble. I mean, Kirk Cousins, uh, who we talked about, had a week for me that, man, he almost submarined the whole team, but I got saved by Rodgers, right? Like I had that balance. But it seems like that super flex spot is so important. And if you try to trot out a lower end quarterback, you know, you could get one of those negative 20s, right? That's true. I forgot about that. Yeah, that QB scoring, it was very, uh, yeah, it'd be detrimental if they just had a bad game. You're right. Like, what was what was the big um, sub- subtractions? Was it interceptions? In- interceptions were, what, minus four, I want to say. And completions were, like, minus one, but then completions were, like, point seven. It was something that you had to have, like, 65% completion percentage to be on the positive uh, and then, you know, basically having interceptions almost wipe out touchdowns, uh, you know, a couple, couple picks. And, you know, you have a Sam Darnold game against the Patriots and you're looking like a negative 70 at that point. Jeez Louise. Oh, yeah. Uh, All right. You're right. That's a good that's, – that's, that's wise of you. Yes. All right. Well, we'll see. As long as you're not in my division this year, we'll we'll, we'll make sure we help each other out again. Okay. If you're in my division, you'll get all sorts of great advice. Like, hey, you know, it would be really good for you as Carson Wentz. That's the guy you're looking for in that high-powered Washington offense. You wouldn't do that to me, Mike, would you? Never, never, never. After the draft, I'd give you all the advice you could possibly, you know, <laughs> tell you everything I think was wrong or right. I look no, forward we'll, to it. We'll have a blast with it. All right, so – Final question is, this is what everyone gets from me because it's it's for my personal benefit, not yours. Uh, 
I am a big fan of sandwiches. That is what I've known for it throughout the community. I just think that being able to port my food rather than having a fork and knife is a benefit. And sandwiches are delicious. And really, you can have anything in a sandwich format. But what I always ask people is, what is the best sandwich you've ever had? Like, you know, any details you have, th this is what we always look for is people who love sandwiches is, is important to me. So I want you to give this some real thought. Don't just throw out like ham and cheese. Like, you know, we want some details here. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, I am, I am also a fan of sandwiches and um, having to like trim down a little bit for this role I got coming up. Um, I don't want to say too much about it, but, but I'm, I'm definitely cutting out bread. So sandwiches is kind of a sore subject for me right now, but that's okay. Oh, I didn't mean to hurt your feelings. Now. You're here. <laughs> oh, we're going to talk about sandwiches. <laughs> How much it hurts. All right. I have a favorite sandwich. Um, Okay, so I've had some favorite sandwiches over the years. Like we went to Italy, we went, we had these fantastic sandwiches there. I can say a lot about those, but but uh, but they're in Italy. They're all the way over there. Mm -hmm. Here, there's this place in LA that has a, a a a meatloaf sandwich. It's like cold meatloaf from the night before. I mean, they mm -hmm. and they just do it right, right? So it's a slab of this delicious meatloaf with like crispy cold lettuce, some pickled it's like it's not just pickles it's like pickled like jalapenos or or pickled onions or there's some some really sour delicious pickling going on there there's this great like sauce on it there's um there's hot sauce on it there it's and it's on this like perfect bread it's one of my favorite sandwiches hands down i crave it every time i come back to la oh my goodness all right so where do we find the sandwich it's on it's called jones on third there's two of them there's one in uh, West Hollywood, and there's one in Studio City in the Valley. Jones on Third has a cold meatloaf sandwich that is just mwah, chef's kiss. I literally had no intentions of being in LA at any point um, <laughs> in the near future, but now I'm kind of like, well, I'll just go for a meatloaf sandwich, and I'm sure my family will love that. I'll be, like, I'll be back tomorrow. But Do I you guys ever make uh, meatloaf ever? We t tend to do turkey meatloaf because uh, I'm, yeah. I'm overweight. Um, do so, a yeah. turkey meatloaf. So the next day, you ever slice off some of that meatloaf and put it on a sandwich? Oh yeah, no, it's been done. I just feel like mine comes out more like the Boston Market meatloaf sandwich than the one you just described. I, I feel like I'm not. <laughs> I'll have to work on my artistry, but I'll, I'll send you some <laughs> pictures and you can tell me if I got close. I'm gonna <laughs> just play this recording as I'm making my meatloaf sandwich, and I'm like, Tom, did I get it right? <laughs> I want to see pictures. I want to. I want a full description. Oh, I will. I will literally. We'll get. We'll. We'll join a video. We don't even have to do a podcast, but I will explain the bite as I'm taking it, and you know, you can <laughs> see my face and tell me if I hit it. <laughs> hey, Mike, are you still in Malden? Where are you living now? I am up by Nashua now. Uh, oh, Nashua, so Nashua. yeah, oh. yeah. So we moved out of the city when the kids came along, and you know, we know how how that area is. I'm not going to get in the yard and stuff. So yeah. So now we have a dog and um, a backyard and that was different for me. Uh, they, they make you pay to get your trash picked up, which was weird. Uh, and I don't have uh, plumbing anymore. We have a septic system, so I don't have right. a garbage disposal. Uh, so yeah, a lot of things have changed in, in my <laughs> life from when I was in the city, <laughs> mostly good. Like, you know, I have nice hiking and stuff and like, you know, wildlife, but uh, but yeah, we, we no longer have uh, what I'm used to. So, but it sounds lovely. Uh, Nashua, New Hampshire, New Hampshire's great. Uh, yeah, I grew up with a septic tank. You know, you just be careful. Can't can't flush it too many times. But uh, uh, that sounds great, man. So hopefully, there's lots of good, tasty sandwiches near you, though. Oh, we'll we'll find some, and let me know if you ever do make your way back to Bridgewater. I think we talked about um, you know the Charlie Horse is, is no longer, um, and mm -hmm. I, I do apologize if I ever bumped into you there I, I don't remember being there but i know i was um so i haven't made it back that way in quite some time so hopefully we're still welcome there but uh yeah no i love the area and always love talking to uh you know a local guy who, who's done so great like yourself and uh, like i said I'm, I'm such a huge fan uh so we did talk about this summer uh, we're all going to be watching The Summer I Turned Pretty on Amazon Prime. You know you have it. You know you have access to it. Get yourself a Fire Stick. If you don't have one, it, it costs you 25 bucks, and it's free shipping because you have Prime. So <laughs> we can check that out and see Tom as the rich family uh, father of the show. So that, that'll be big. And uh, so we won't 
we won't dig into your uh, your newest role. I know you didn't want to talk about it, but <laughs> we will let Jones on third know once you're done filming, that'll be your first stop when you're uh, right ready to get there. back on bread. <laughs> I love it. All right, so before we let you go, anything else you want to let anybody know about or, or talk about before we roll? Nah, man, that's it. Thank you so much for having me on, man. I just, I love talking to you. You're a great guy. And I uh, hope we get to see each other soon. Maybe uh, there's a possibility I'll be going to the um, the convention. Are you going to do the convention? Oh, you know it. Absolutely. Okay. I, will, I hope I, I get to make it there. Oh, it's, you'll have a blast. If you can get out there, it, it's such a good time. Um, I think we had drinks with uh, half the league mates that you had mentioned and Great. everyone's just out there having a ball. Um, awesome. You can try your luck at a fancy uh, flight football. I will not be doing that because that's a full <laughs> hamstring waiting to happen. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, no, I'm gonna, I'll cheer from the sidelines. That, that's what I'll be doing. And probably critiquing as well because yeah. uh, I'm that jerk who will be like, hey, why didn't you catch that while, <laughs> while I'm not playing? Because I know I'm way too old and out of shape to do so. Uh, but, yeah, no, I'll be in Canton, uh, what is it, August 13th to the 16th or whatever for cool. what's always a great time. Awesome. Hope I hope I get to see you there, man. I hope that all comes together. Yeah, that'd be wild. Let me know. Uh, hit me up if, if you're going. And, uh, yeah, we'll be there with uh, – you know, I think a lot of the folks that you already know, I'm, I'll be shacking up with uh, Troy King and Linda as always. I'm trying to get uh, Kudadu to come out. I'm, I'm begging her. So, yeah. you know, maybe we'll be able to get the whole gang out. And I know that uh, what he also friends with, like Faith was out last time. So, Great. yeah, we always have a good group. So Awesome. Yeah, that'd cool, be man. wild if you could make it out. Well, Tom, thank you so much. I'm going to let Gabe take us out. It's been a pleasure, man. Thank you so much for joining us. I appreciate All right, it. Be All good. right, buddy. Talk to you soon. Bye for now. Turn on the pot cause we looking alive right now Peeling it back, take a quick look inside up All of these analysts, that of your handle this Know he's a baddie, I know he ain't bad at this We gon' lay back, talking irrelevance Why do all that? Just for the hell of it Hanging with daddy, late night vibe